welcome to episode 24 of My Yarny Corner. My name's Alex and I live in Yorkshire in the UK and this is a podcast all about knitting and crochet. So welcome everybody, I hope that you're all okay and I hope you've had a lovely crafty two weeks. All the information about where you can find me will be in the description box below and all anything that I talk about I will leave a link to below in the description box. Why was that such a mouthful? I don't know. Everything will be in the description box below. You just click the little arrow and everything will be there. Anything that I talk about in the video and where you can find me will be linked below. That sounded better. <laughs> oh my God, here we go. I'm recording this a day early. Today is Wednesday the 15th of December. As you all know, I usually record on a Thursday and this will be uploaded tomorrow. It's just because I'm doing vlogs and I just need to give myself a little bit more time on the editing process. When I did the last podcast, I literally spent all day editing with the vlogs and the podcast and my phone just kept going flat. So I'm going to give myself a little bit longer this time and record a day early. So I've got longer to edit it and then upload it to YouTube. So now that mouthful is out of the way. I hope you are all okay and I hope you've had a lovely crafty two weeks and I do think I've said that. Oh my God, shut up Alex. <laughs> so how have we all been? Are we all enjoying the Advent season? I've been watching a lot of Vlogmases and some of the Advent, Advent knitting is absolutely gorgeous. I'm in awe of all of it. It's lovely. I hope you've all had something, some Advent knitting or if you've not had an Advent calendar, I hope that you've cast on something special for the Advent season. I have been doing some advent knitting and it's different to what I showed you last time. I've had a little bit of drama with mine. Um, I cast on the Habitation Throw by Helen Stewart. I had a 10 gram mini advent calendar and I thought oh, it'll be fine because it did call for 10 gram minis in the pattern. But once I got near, I think it was day 10, I'm sure it was day 10 that I decided to pull it out. It was coming out at like 20 inches. The way that pattern works is you start at one corner of the blanket and you work out and out and out like this. And then when you get to the halfway point, you'll go back the other way. So when it was coming out at 20 inches, that would have been the size of the blanket. So I was a bit, mm, it's a little bit small. and I didn't want to waste my advent calendar in it if I wasn't going to use it. So I pulled it all out and I've managed to save the yarn. Some of the... I'll talk about it when I bring the project out, but managed to save the yarn and decided to cast on another advent project instead. I still like the Helen Stewart pattern and I do intend on doing it again. I like the scrappy version because if I'm honest, I think if I made that all in one colour, I would get very bored of it. So it'll definitely have to be um, a scrappy version, but I think I'd probably try it again with 20 gram minis. I think that would definitely be a much better size. But yeah, it is a lovely pattern. So, having said all that, I'll get on and talk straight on about the advent that I've been making. So, la -da -da -da. I had two advent calendars this year. Well, I had three advent calendars this year. I had two yarn advent calendars and another advent calendar, which has just been the most special, special advent calendar ever. It's had dye in it, it's had treats, I've had some fluffy socks, I've had candles. I've had the most amazing things in it and that was off my friend Shelley. It was a total surprise and I have had so much fun opening that. She has caught me out because I've not opened it in order and she remembered which things she put in it in each day so she has caught me out on the fact that it's not been opened in order. <laughs> but I've had such a blast opening it and I had an advent calendar from Emma at Moo and Mouse which has been just gorgeous and that one came with this bag as well and that one was an advent swap that we did um, so yeah that's been lovely as well and then I've had my green yarn green lambkin yarn advent calendar which is Suzanne and I've been buying that since March and yeah it's just been lovely so I've felt very spoiled this year never actually actually had an advent calendar before so this has just been amazing it's been absolutely brilliant so as I've just waffled on about for ages I did change my advent project now I decided to make a c2c join as you go blanket you will have to excuse the ends on this and this is where I'm up to now I absolutely love it 
I didn't start this, I think it was day eight I started this. Those of you that have been watching Vlogmas, you might be able to correct me if I've got the wrong day. Um, I started this I think on day eight and I planned on just using the Moo and Mouse yarn to go into this. But once I realised how big I wanted it, this is going to be a hundred squares. So I'm putting both my advent calendars into it. So corner to corner, join as you go. Each square is a mini corner to corner. And I have done, obviously it's all four ply yarn, and I've done 11 blocks by 11 blocks. I don't know why I chose that number. I just carried on until it was the size that I wanted it, which turned out to be 11 blocks by 11 blocks. So basically what you'll do is you'll start with your first square. Let's get it off like that. You'll start in one corner and you crochet out and then when you get it to the size that you want you crochet back in and that gives you that is basically what a corner to corner is it's super fast super fun and very very addictive with the join as you go ones once you've done your first square you'll just start your second square here so you'll start your first chain here and this will be your next corner so you'll work from here like that up to there and then back in again and then you've got your second one already joined on now if you're better than me you will weave in your ends as you go I tend to have like an hour where I'll weave in ends so I've left them all for now and then when you come to your second row so you'll do your first row all the way across to however many squares you want it then your second row you'll do the same thing you'll start here you'll go up like that and across like that and then you'll put your second square in and do the same thing and because obviously you've got a square here and a square here once you get to these inner squares it's much easier because you're only chaining three and then you're slipping into your first gap and you just carry on and on and on this is actually the right side I do have stitch markers on so I know when I'm weaving in my ends which side to weave the ends in and I've just had so much fun putting this together. Super quick, super addictive. So I started it on, I think it was day eight. And as you can see, I've done 17 squares. <laughs> so I want to do it um, 10 squares by 10 squares and then put a really chunky border on. Now just one second. So this blanket is a corner to corner, join as you go. This is Danny's, Danny's stolen this one, and this is done in DK weight. Now, when I did this one, one, two, three, four, five, six squares by one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So this is six by ten squares. And I've gone round and I've just put a nice chunky border on. This one, I'm going to put a wider border on than what I've got on here, but this is like, like a tartan effect. Can you see I've gone white and green? Grey and green, white and green again. Can't really show this very well on here. But that is how it works up. I did this one years ago. It's been in the wash a million times and it's so soft and squishy. It washes really, really well. So that's basically what I'm making with my advent calendar. So, really, really impressed. Yep, so really, really impressed. And I'm just I love I'm just loving seeing how all the colours are coming together. Some of the ones that I had to pull out from the habitation throw. Let me see if I can show you light. <clears throat> Which one is it? Some of the ones that I had to pull out of the habitation throw are unfortunately less than ten grams. These squares. I weighed in at seven grams, so I thought I'd be able to get them all in. But I think because some yarns are slightly thicker, they vary a little bit, I do need to have 10 grams to get a square in. Sometimes I've got a couple of grams left, sometimes I've only got half a gram left. But as long as I've got 10 grams, I know I can get a square. So when I was making the habitation throw and I had to pull it out, some of the yarn that I'd put into it, because I wanted to finish it on a wrong side row, I'd left a couple of grams and so they are just short of the 10 grams so them ones like this one i'm going to put into some scrappy socks and they'll be perfect for that so nothing is getting wasted it's all getting used i'll just show you it again because i'm so in love with it isn't it just gorgeous absolutely gorgeous 
I'm hoping to get this second strip finished today. And to be honest, it's all I've worked on for days. I can't put it down. I keep saying, oh, I'll get bored of it in a minute, but I'm just so addicted to it. I love it. It's gorgeous. So that's my first work, work in progress. I don't actually have any finished objects. I've got a half finished object this time, but that is all. So I will show you that. On the last podcast, I talked about Danny's socks that I was making. I have finished one of his socks. Um, now this is a yarn that I dyed, and I dyed it especially for Danny. I can't put them on a sock blocker because they're too big. But this is them. So this yarn is one that I dyed for Danny, and the grey one is an attic spin dye in the colourway Black Death. Now I cast on 72 stitches for him, it's a plain vanilla sock, I've done 4 inches for the leg and 10 inches for the foot. So the actual knitting of the foot is only um, 6 inches, I did 2 inches, obviously there's 2 inches there on the heel and there's 2 inches on the toe and 6 inches for the foot. He has tried them on and they fit perfectly, thank goodness. But I'm really struggling with second sock syndrome at the moment. Really am struggling with second sock syndrome. I have this sock to finish and I have one for Ruby to finish and I have another one for a gift to finish as well. And I just, I've not got it in me to make the second sock. I don't know what's going on. I did change my needles from 2.75 to 2.5 needles and they are these ones. They're just, where have they gone? There we are. They're just the Knit Pro. I only have one pair of these. I've ordered some more, so when the other ones get here, I'm going to cast on some more socks, but I'm going to do them two at a time, just to avoid the second sock syndrome, because I just I do not have it in me to make that second sock. That sock took me a good two weeks to make, and I can normally knock a pair of socks out in a week and a half, and two weeks to make one. So it will get done eventually, but it may have to wait. What? Smile. <laughs> <laughs> he's been sat here while I've been podcasting. He's been sat just there and it's been so weird. Normally when I podcast, I'm on my own. And it doesn't matter if you feel silly when you're on your own. But he's been sat there and I'm very aware that he's sat there. I think he's going to get something to eat now. So that's going to make the rest of the podcast much easier. I did have second sock syndrome earlier on this year. I think, was it? By April, May time, I got it really bad and I just completely lost my sock mojo, completely. I don't want to do that again. So I'm just, I'm not going to make, cast on any more socks until I've got that second needle. And hopefully by doing two at a time socks, it's going to be much easier. But yeah, just no, no desire to work on socks whatsoever at the moment. But I don't know whether that is because I'm just loving making the C2C blanket. I'm loving the Advent season. And socks are just, unless I cast on the scrappy version, I could do that. No, I'm going to carry on what I'm doing. I'm not going to get sidetracked with anything else. I've already cast on far too many whips this weekend. I'd been so, so good. I'd said a few weeks ago that I was going to have a two whip limit. And I did it for about a week. And then I got so, so bored. And this is why we cast on all the things, isn't it? Because some days you don't want to work on what you've told yourself you're going to work on. Some days you just want to work on something else. And that's absolutely fine. So I decided on Sunday that, yeah, everything I've just said is true. I can cast on what I want. So I cast on everything. I'm not going to show you it all today because that would be ridiculous. We'd be here all day. But I have literally just cast on all of the things. One of them being the change in staircases show. I did show this pattern a few weeks ago. Now it's written by Tristan Molina and it's by Dragon Hard of Dragon Hard Yarn, I think. Written by Tristan Molina, Dragon Hard Yarn. That's what it says on the front. And this is a one skein project. When I got this pattern on Ravelry, it was free. I don't know if it still is. It's a gorgeous, gorgeous pattern. It's similar to the um close to you shawl in the way that it's done but the effect it gives is much different now this is a snuggly stars yarn that i'm using 
and I bought this at Yarndale. I cannot remember what the yarn was called, but I'll put it on the screen. I'll, I did film a Yarndale vlog and I showed all the yarn, so I'll be able to go back and see what the yarn was called, but it's by Snuggly Stars Yarn. Now, only just started this. I can, I need something to put behind it so you can see. Try it like that. You start, there you go. You get this gorgeous, gorgeous lace section on it. it it'll need blocking for you to see it. You can't, it's not showing it at all. It's not showing it at all. I'll try and put a picture on the screen because you can't really see it too much on here. But basically you've got sections of lace. There we go, you can see it now. And sections of knitting. And that's why I said it's similar to the close to you shawl in that you're, you're casting off little sections of it every so often. But it's just, it has full lace sections where the other one doesn't. But it's gorgeous. It's absolutely gorgeous. And I love the yarn that I've chosen. It is a one skein project. Now the Close to You shawl was a one skein project. And they're both, well I'm talking about that shawl all the time. It's just, it's quite similar. Um, and the way that this pattern is written, you can just keep going. So if I want to make it bigger, I can maybe add a black yarn and just make it a little bit bigger. But I think the size is going to be perfect. It's lovely. So that is my first cast on. And yeah, absolutely love it. Now that is living. I think I'm going to be going off on tangents on this podcast because that now leads me into this beautiful bag I received. This bag is by Jeanette of the Crafty Clegs Creations podcast. And I received this the other day. For those of you that watch Vlogmas, or I've been watching my Vlogmas, you will have seen me open this. Isn't it gorgeous? And I'll talk about it more in a minute, but look at the lining. Isn't it just beautiful? So that's the bag it's living in. And yep, just taking my time with it, just picking it up when I want and just working on whatever I want right now. I'm not putting any kind of restrictions on myself. I'm just going to work on what I want to work on. Which will lead me now into incoming. I do have something else to talk about as well, but I want to talk about incoming because I've just shown you the bag. Or should I talk about my other project? Because I've only got one more project to talk about. I will talk about the other project first. Which is living in my Diane bag from U Tree Yarncraft. So, I also got from Jeanette this beautiful Scapier's Whirl. I absolutely love it. I've only ever had one of these before and I loved it. I made a shawl with it and now I have another one. The greys and the greens are just totally my colours. It's a four-ply yarn. I think it's 200 um, grams. Let me just check. Uh, where is it? Not on that bit. 215 grams and it's a thousand meters. Now what I'm doing with this is I'm doing a very basic granny triangle shawl. I, I adore granny triangle shawls. I absolutely adore them. And I'm going to keep going and going and going until I run out of yarn. And then I'm going to get some grey yarn and add tassels on it. They're the simplest shawl to make with crochet, but they are so beautiful. So all you do is basically a granny square, but it's not, it's a triangle. And basically all you do, if I'm a beginning bit, you'll do three trebles into a magic ring, a couple of chains, and then three more trebles, and then just chain up and three trebles into each chain space and go across all the way around making sure for your point here we go for your point you do three trebles a chain one and three trebles yeah i love granny uh, granny triangle shawls these are the first shawls i ever learned to make and 
it was Hannah from the Cozy Cottage Crochet that used to make a lot of them. She made the Treasure Island shawl years ago and that was the one I fell in love with. They're absolutely beautiful and although they are the simplest of simple, when you have Escapier's Whirl, the yarn will speak for itself completely. You put a few tassels on these and they're absolutely gorgeous. So that should be a really nice size with a thousand meters to put onto it. Now the hook I'm using is the there is no hook size on this. It'll be a 3.5. It'll be a 3.5 hook. And obviously this is cotton and acrylic. Um let me find out the ratio of it. Da, 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 doesn't say scapiers are cotton and acrylic. Ah, here we are. Sixty percent cotton and forty percent acrylic. So because of the cotton, they are so soft, so nice next to the skin. I have a blue one. It was, it started off dark blue and then faded into white. It's absolutely gorgeous. It's upstairs, so I can't get it out to show you. But yeah, so I'm really enjoying making that. It's quite crochet heavy, is this podcast, isn't it? But yeah really really enjoying it so that is my other work in progress oh i said i had no finished objects i do have a finished object it's not knitting or crochet i've just I'm obviously brought it in to show you and then it's got lost under project bags i've just noticed it now i do have a finished object so, um, again, if you've been watching the vlogs, you'll have seen that Danny actually bought me a sewing machine um, just to have a little play with. I am by no means a sewer at all, but I have had such a blast using it. Um, I've not used it for a few days now, so I've not got any material really left. <laughs> I need to get some more material, but I've just been having a play. In fact, I've got two finished objects. They're both sewing. Oh, my God. Let me get the other one. You might have spotted it, it's here. So I've been having a play. Danny has made the most amazing project bag as well, which I will also show you in a minute. But we've just been playing. So I've been putting on some YouTube tutorials and I've not been stressing about what could be hard, what looks hard, what people say is hard. I've just typed in beginner sewing projects on YouTube and I've just gone for it. So the first thing I've made is a Christmas tree. Because we don't have a Christmas tree, there is nowhere to put one, especially with the kittens still being as they are. So I made this Christmas tree. Now, it has a lot of mistakes. As you can see, it's quite big. Um, it does have a lot of mistakes. So I didn't realise that on the pattern, I, I drew the pattern onto some greaseproof paper and then cut round it. So I didn't realise that I should have exaggerated these points on the pattern. I didn't allow for the fact that I was doing, you know, gonna when I was stitching, it was going to take off a lot of the point. So the points aren't very good. Also, <laughs> because I'm such a newbie with sewing, I didn't realise that when I was drawing the Christmas tree, as my friend Shelley has explained to me, to make it symmetrical, I should have folded the greaseproof paper in half and just drawn half a Christmas tree and then cut it. And then when I opened it, it would have been symmetrical. I didn't do that either. So I lost a lot of the tree because one side was a completely different size to the other side. And then I had to trim it all. So I lost a lot of it there as well. But having said that, I'm super, super pleased with it. It was a really, really easy um, sewing project. The tutorial was fantastic. I will link it below in the description box. And if I forget to link anything, just leave me a comment and I will add it in. Sometimes I do forget to link things. Um, but yeah, I am really, really pleased. And it stands up on its own as well. I have a box here so I can demonstrate. It stands up perfectly well on its own. I should have really sewn some little bells on the end. I do have some. Um, and if I make another one, I will. But yeah, isn't it cute? So that was my first sewing project. I'm also, whoops, I can't get my tree back now. So Danny has also made a bag, which I'm gonna show you. I'm not sure if I'm allowed to show you, but he's shown it on the vlog, so I think it'll be fine. 
Danny has made me a sock bag. Isn't it gorgeous? And he's done it drawstring, so it does close, and he's lined it. Isn't it lovely? And he's put a box bottom on the bottom as well. So I think that's absolutely gorgeous, and it is the perfect size for a sock bag. So, Danny has made one. So then I wanted to make a project bag. <laughs> so I made a Snoopy one. We've had some right fun with the sewing machine, we really have. So this is mine. Now I should have had this bit bigger, I think. It would have been it would have looked better if that bit came down to about here. But that's fine. I did put a zip in it. The dog is playing with a toy in the background. I'm really sorry. I did put a zip in it and I've lined it. And it also has a box bottom. I'm so pleased. I am so, so pleased with that. Absolutely amazed. So yeah, <laughs> I do have another finished object. My sewing skills are leaving a lot to be desired. This is a proper dodgy bag, as Ali would say from uh, Little Drops of Wonderful. It's a real dodgy bag. That bit's quite dodgy there. But I don't mind. I'm enjoying learning. Um, a few people had written in the comments on the vlogmas that zips are really hard to do and I did find it tricky, I'm not going to lie, I found it really tricky um, but yeah, I've just gone for whatever they've said on the tutorial and just thought it doesn't matter if it goes wrong, it's only material and just yeah, I'm really loving it Like I say, I'm run out of material now so um, it's going to be after Christmas until I can get the sewing machine out again, probably. I think I've got a couple of fat quarters left, unless I can find a fat quarter project. But you can even type that in on YouTube. Fat quarter sewing project. And up something will come. Brilliant. So, yeah, there's a, there was a tutorial that I used for the bag. I can't remember which one I used. I think I mixed two tutorials together on this one. Um, but, yeah really really enjoying that so i think that is it for all the crafty content so we'll now go into on to incoming goodies well so back to my gift from um, jeanette for those of you that watch vlogmas you've already seen this and i've used some of it so not all of it is here to show you um Jeanette, who is the, has the Crafty Clegs Creations podcast, had asked me to design a bear for her advent swap this year, advent calendar this year, no, advent box this year. Goodness me, get your words out, Alex. Um, it was quite a few months ago now, and I was just so happy to be asked to do it. I was absolutely blown away to be asked. So I did that, and she said to me, I'll send you a box as well. And I said, oh, no, no, it's fine, it's fine. She goes, no, I want to send you a box as well. So she sent me a message last week and she said, I've sent you um, an advent box. Obviously, I've not put the, the things in to make the bear because you've already made it. You've got the pattern. You've already made the bear. So I've put some different things in the box. So I was a little bit intrigued and I thought, oh, what she put in? So I kind of just expected um, a project bag, which is what I got. Where's my project bag gone? Which is what I got. So when I opened the box, this was the first thing that I saw. And I was just like, oh my God, oh my God. But this is the box. I've kept it to show you. Now, honestly, I was, in fact, I burst into tears. It was just something else. She sent me these beautiful hand gels. Now these are just gorgeous. This one is a warm vanilla sugar. It's beautiful. And this one is first snowfall. So I got those. I got chocolate, which I've already eaten. I got stitch markers. I'll just grab my stitch marker bag. Now I've used one of them already on my C2C blanket. But the cum oops, on this beautiful pin. Look at those, aren't they gorgeous? Not one's a smiley face, it's not turning. Aren't they just beautiful? There you go. 
and they're all attached in these little hooks on this pin. Absolutely gorgeous. So you put those in it. This one I was really excited to get. A Crafty Clegg's Creations pin, which I have been eyeing up for ages. This, um, this is where I keep all my needles and um, stitch markers. I keep all of my stuff in this bag here. And I want to fill it with pins and badges. So I have this one here. I got this from Snuggly Stars Yarns at Yarndale. Crafty Clegg's and my Yarndale badge. And this is a stitch marker that I loved. This came from Mr and Mrs Rabbit Yarns, I think. So, so I got that. I also got Scapier's Katona, which is two 50 gram balls. Now these are cotton, aren't they beautiful? There's two 50 gram balls of those. See how spoiled I was? kit to make your own crochet purse with the pattern. I'll show you the pattern first. Stuart, don't go in there, darling. It's a coin purse. That's it. A kit to make one of those. She even sent me the fixings for it. Isn't that gorgeous? Isn't it just gorgeous? I absolutely love it. So I'm going to do it in this yarn. It's just beautiful. She even sent me the lining for it. So what a perfect match. Isn't it gorgeous? Obviously she's matched it perfectly that way. She's, she's done it on purpose because she's that thoughtful and just perfect. And then it was really strange because I think the day before I got this box, I was saying I needed a sock book because when I was doing Danny's socks, um, I did it slightly different to how I would do for my sock for my sock recipe for my feet. So I ended up talking about it on the vlog just so I had a record of what I'd done. And I said, I need a sock book. So I got this beautiful, beautiful notebook, which is going to be my sock book for 2022. Just absolutely gorgeous. And that is not all. This is just... To make a hat. This pom-pom. I, I can't... I wish you could put your hand through the screen and feel this pom-pom. It is the softest, softest pom-pom ever. And this gorgeous, this is 50 grams, four ply yarn, and it's just, just beautiful. There, are, there is a label with this. Um, Artisan Alley, UK. It's just, just gorgeous. So if any of you have a good hat recommendation, this is four ply and it's 50 grams. And... Yeah, if any of you have got a good hat recommendation for this, hat pattern recommendation for this, just leave it in a comment if you wouldn't mind. Because I've been looking on Ravelry. And the thing when you look on Ravelry, it just becomes so overwhelming. There are so many patterns to choose from and I just get overwhelmed. So I'm looking for recommendations for this. It's just beautiful. So I can't wait to start it. So yeah, totally, utterly blown away by that. I really was. It was just the kindest, kindest thing ever. So yeah, I'm going to cry again. No, I'm not. I'm fine. So I think that is everything for the podcast today. I actually thought this episode was going to be much shorter because I'd spent all my time working on the C2C that I didn't really have a great deal to show, but I've still managed to ramble on for 35 minutes. Oh my word. <laughs> um, so this is going to be the last episode before Christmas. The next one should be on the 30th of December. Um, 
A little bit about the shop updates. We are going to be starting Mystery Sock Clubs next year. Now, it's going to run for the entire year. We are going for an Only Fools and Horses theme, which is something a little bit different. Just Tilly. Tilly's now meowing at the window. So the colourways are going to be inspired by Only Fools and Horses. And there's going to be... It's going to run for the entire year. So the first mystery clubs are going to go on sale, I think, on the 27th, 28th of December, something like that. We will close the listings around the 7th of January, so they'll only be up for about a week or so. Um, so keep your eye out for that. It's going to be a mystery sock club. Like I say, it'll run for the entire year and it will consist of a 100 gram skein of yarn and a coordinating 20 gram mini skein of yarn. Um, there will also be an option to add a project bag if you want. The project bags are not made by us. They are made by one of our lovely friends who just enjoys making them. Um, so there will be an option to add a project bag if you want. So you can add that as an option. If you don't want to, you can just get the uh, Mystery Sock Club. Totally your call. So just keep your eye out on Etsy because that will be going up around the 27th, 28th for month one. And like I say, it will close around the 7th of January and then with a shipping date about a week later. Just one second. Sorry about that, that was the cat again. Yep, so that's the first mystery sock club that will start in January. We are really, really excited about this. I'm also wanting to run a make-along. Now, I'm not sure at all. I don't want to do a sock make-along. There are already lots of amazing, amazing people doing sock make-alongs. So I don't want to jump on that bandwagon. So if there's anything that you would like to see in a make-along, leave a comment below. Um, I'd like to start it either January or February and just do it for a couple of months. But if you've got any ideas or anything that you'd like to see in a make-along, leave a comment below. Because um, I don't really want to do socks. Um, I know Sharon from the SCR 1TNO project is doing her square a day make-along again, so I don't want to jump on that either. Um, but yeah, just let me know if there's anything particular that you want to see in that. And last thing for the the for us to talk about we are running a birthday bonanza from the 9th to the 16th of january the podcast will be one year old on the 11th of january so my birthday is on the 9th of january danny's birthday is on the 16th of january so we are going to do a birthday bonanza week so for that week and um, the details have not been finalized yet so it'll come out We'll, I'll talk about it more on the next podcast but for that week we are thinking about we want giveaways and vlogs and cat has just fallen over in the kitchen oh my god oh my god it's been constant during this podcast if my phone hasn't rung the cat's meowed or I've had a message or something anyway so yeah um, we're going to have a birthday bonanza week and that will be the 9th to the 16th of January. As you all know as well, I've had a pattern in testing. So far the feedback has been fantastic. I'm just waiting for the other testers um, to give me their feedback and let me know how they think the pattern went. But that will be the ending of our birthday bonanza. There will be the pattern released on the 16th of January for the end of that. So there's lots to look forward to. Even though Christmas is over, we're going to make it special for you. Keep the happiness going with a birthday bonanza. So watch out on the next podcast. I'll finalise all the details with Danny and let you know on the next podcast what we're doing. But yeah, just keep an eye out for the Mystery Sock Clubs um, just after Christmas if you'd like to purchase one of those. So that is definitely everything. 40 minutes later, I'm going to finally let you all get on with your day. <laughs> I've got to get on with my day as well. I've got vlogging to do. <laughs> I can't just sit here chatting, but I'm having such a blast talking to you all. So I hope you have a lovely crafty two weeks. And most importantly of all, I hope you have a very Merry Christmas. Stay safe, everybody, and I'll see you all in two weeks. Bye-bye.